silence, if you will, because you have a message for other people in this life, just like me. Detweiler knows exactly where teens like Talon Owens are coming from. In his 20s, he was an entrepreneur, and by the time he hit 30, he was a millionaire. But after investing in a friend's business, which turned out to be a Ponzi scheme, he lost everything. And that's right, you're rock bottom. I was in the place of suicide, wondering how to end the pain, all, all of it, and God was there when he alive today. Detweiler was homeless for two years, including one year that he lived in a treehouse in his brother's backyard. It was then that he says he realized the power of words in a program he called Samson Light, which he created to help teens struggling through depression, was born. It's interesting, when we actually built it all out, we realized that we built a leadership program in it. So we don't market it that way, but that's really, it has the fundamentals of leadership, training, and skill sets in there. Oh, I went through the 90-day program his freshman year of high school, and he says without it, he would still be in a dark place. I started out when I was in the program, like, just writing down, like, three things that I'm grateful for every day. And uh, every day, I would try and find more things that I was grateful for, and soon enough, like, throughout the 90-day program, by the end of the program, I was writing half pages to full pages of things that I was grateful for, because you realize there's a lot that you weren't grateful for. Several teens have gone through this program, and Detweiler says they've seen tremendous results. He says they go from teens battling depression and suicidal thoughts to people who can help others and possibly save lives. Now they're inspiring. Now they feel like they have a purpose and a mission for their life. And so that was our program with the teens. And I just, that's where our heart is. We really want to help as many teens as we can. <clears throat> Detweiler says they had 60 people of all ages go through their first 90 day session and they're getting ready to launch a six month program. And he's also working on finding companies to sponsor these teens. Talent, which you saw in the video, was sponsored, which offset the cost for the program. And he says they play a major role in getting these kids the help they need. Dee? So, um, hey, Rocky, yes. Okay, good. So, I guess questions? I think we need to cheer up, Jeff. I, just kudos. I mean, if I would have known about you three months ago, we might have had a different story at, at our company. Um, but this is phenomenal. So how how are you funding this? I mean, this is awesome. But how are you funding the dream? Thank you for asking, Jody. And yes, I wish we would have connected three months ago. So um, unlike a lot of the companies who have a percentage of the company, and, and you get that, what we decided to do. Um, specifically down here is we're looking for sponsors. Now the reason these teams were actually in the program, Jody, is because they were sponsored in uh, by uh, individuals or they were sponsored in by companies. And the cool thing about that is is that we work with the 501c3 so it's actually tax deductible on that end. It actually checks gets wrote to the 501c3. And so, um, and then they buy the program for the teams. So what's exciting about this is that um, we want as many teams as we can and it's funded by the local community, it's by, it's by parents, by uh, companies, organizations, associations, or funds. Well, what, what are you passing out? So, yeah, so, um, so what this is, is he, he asks a question. Normally the question gets asked here is, uh, how, how can we help you? How can you help me? <laughs> so, uh, I believe in taking action. Uh, I, I think that that's one of the first steps to business, relationships, anything is that it's action. So we wanted to make sure that everybody received one of these because there's three main points that we really wanted to cover. And I personally don't want to leave here without those being filled out, at least a name or a contact number, because I believe that it, it, this, what we're talking about, it affects all of us in some form or fashion. Um, and so what we're looking for is three things. First thing is we're looking for a teenager. They don't have to be at risk. Um, some of the moms says, well, my teen's not really lived. Great, we'd love to have them in. Because what happens after the six month program is there will be teams who will rise to the top and they'll become the mentors for the next group. Yeah, yes. I, can I just add a point? Um, we don't know what at risk teenagers look like. My kids were yeah. perfect, looked perfectly yeah. fine. My daughter is a cheerleader, um, had, I mean, had no signs or symptoms. So um, that's why we're leaving it open to teenagers right. have it hard these days. Cyberbullying follows them into the households. Now they're not safe. Um, from cyberbullying or anything like that. So that's why we're opening it up to all teenagers. There's, the struggle is real for them. That's right, it's very real. We didn't know it either until um, our daughter, you know, great home, you would think a great home, right? Until she wants to cut herself and is thinking about suicide. So she fits in one of the seven. So it's very unassuming. Yeah. 
Yeah, yes. So do you have trained therapists that are working with teens with substance abuse issues and bipolar disorder and manic depression? Yes. Oftentimes that's part of the issue. Yes, we do have um, licensed professionals on the team. Who was if that's an answer your question? Yes. yes, we do. I mean I mean we're all all of us are at risk at, at, at one level, but we all have something inside us and, and, and I love how you're focusing on pulling that out. And I mean the positiveness of, of this message. I mean, there actually is scientific evidence that the right words really do matter. Yes. And the wrong ones may you know, don't. What have, what have you figured out have been the most powerful words, the most powerful message to get out? So uh, the words I believe, Norris, to answer your question, they actually start in your thoughts. So you don't just start speaking something, it actually comes from what you're thinking about. And in the generation that you know the kids are raising up now, a lot of it actually has come from their social media and what they're seeing online. All right, so they're being pre-programmed. They're seeing 10,000 deaths before they're like 10 years old or something, right? So there's lots of pre-programming that's going on. And what happens is it's your words. So we want to rewrite that code and kind of, if you will, shift, shift the change of the thoughts from like, hey, I want to go this way to this way by teaching them and training them good thought processes. And so that will revert to positive things. I can do it, right? Powerful words, uplifting messages of hope and encouragement. I mean, that is so, so powerful that changing that internal dialogue, and there are a lot of formal therapies that are, that are out there that, that come to that. So you're saying that you're, you're starting with their thoughts, not trying to come from outside and, and program, program, program them with a formula, but you're actually working with their thoughts. Yeah, I don't first of all know what they're thinking. You know, I mean, we can't get into their mind. I don't know if I'm, I'm trying to get your question. So well, I don't know. That's right. okay. I, I just, what's, what's the key to lever? What's, what, what was the, for you, the main afraid that the aha moment is, ah, this is the tool that's going to work to change them. Okay, good question. So I'll use my story, and then I'll okay. use Andrew's story, okay. which I got permission to use. So in mine, I, ha I, I was going a certain direction. And I'm, once you make that turn to go, I want, I'm, I'm falling into depression, the next kind of step, if you will, is suicide. And it's your thoughts, you start to keep going that direction. There's no hope for me, it's so dark, nobody loves me, nobody cares about me. Those thoughts keep going, then you start speaking those words. So what, in, in Andrew's case, what he did is he thought about something, and he thought, oh, I wonder if. So there's a positive action that happened from his, I, th I wonder if, if she would be my friend. And so he started changing his thought process and what he was saying, and that's why he's alive today. That's what happened with me. I said, well, maybe there is hope for me. And I started creating this new stream, this new right, thought process, and that's where I am today. So it was just, it's a little bit by a little bit, each and every time. So you had three things you said, you started to tell us the three things you were asking for. Yeah, um, Cheryl, if there's a couple of people up here that don't have them. Um, there's three things, it's, t you, I'm sorry, real quick, do you have a question? Yeah, I've got a couple. Um, you know, how, how do you get, I'm not familiar with your organization, so I don't, That's actually on the list. So here's what we're looking for, is we're actually looking for those organizations that we can connect with, that we can work with. I, each one of us have a sphere of influence in our lives, and I, mine's only so big. And so being able to present here, it just widens right, my, my radius to be able to reach more people. And that's why we wanted to lay these out, because there's people that you know that either are um, counselors, or their superintendents of schools, or maybe <coughs> somebody that you're connected to um, at Albertsons that they have a fund and they want to be able to help teens. We'd love to be in touch with them, or Micron, or HP. I mean, there are connections that each one of us have that I could never walk through those doors without that relationship. There's just no way. A friend of mine referred me to somebody and now we're doing business with them. That sort of thing. So that's why we wanted to pass this And out. I'm also wondering, like, what's, what's the structure of your program or your classroom? kids come for like an hour and you talk or do, is there is it like a group or yes it's two hours uh, so it's two hours week, every, other every other week yes every other week yeah and just a couple of people on the on our on our team if you will um one of them is the former executive director for university of phoenix a phd so uh bill is more of a life coach and then we have a, a two licensed counselors on the team as well um and then we have uh cheryl's on and tony's on the team we have a couple other people on teams, so there's lots of variation in skill sets, and we have IT and 
marketing, but I think that might be impressive. The program itself is online. Um, so the daily program tests that they follow, I think that's what you're asking. It's an online environment that can access from phone, tablet, PC, laptop, whatever. Um, but then the in-person meetings are to enforce those connections and more education and, and the support. And so those meet twice per month during the six months. Along those lines, you've got a website that kind of outlines, so I what, and what's the website? Yes, samson.life. Samson.life. Yes. Because it's easier to refer someone to that than give you a name and have you. Great. Yeah, that works too. Rocky, so if I want to sponsor a team, like what is it? Is there like a unit cost? Like how much does it cost to get one? It's $1,200 for the uh, six months. How many, how many teams have gone through your program? We had we had six or seven the, six or seven the first time. Right now we have about fifteen or twenty lined up ready to go uh, in June. So we're looking for more. Are you selling the shirts? Yes, yes, we are selling shirts. How much are they? It really depends on the price, but the average is twenty dollars. And we co-brand very well with companies as well. And can we pick our own words? I haven't done that yet. I think there are some people yeah, that there's a, there's a positive. Yeah, there are positive <laughs> words. We might even have them on our shirts already. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> he has I all the words. I suck. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, the humor is important in, in all of this, I would assume. Yes. Uh, you obviously are, are, are a shy, retiring soul with a <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, how, do you, how does humor work into all of this? Uh, I think humor is a part of life if you really want it to be. I mean, um, that's a great question. When, when you're down and you're frustrated and things aren't going so well, you're not so happy. So we like to, one of, the, one of our key words is actually fun. So uh, it's the games that we teach and train on. It's the projects that we have people involved in and being able to share and connect with other people. And I think once you're able to do that, you're able to open up and more laugh and just becomes a part of that. I mean, some of the most powerful early research was simply making people watch you know, funny stuff on, on videos, the Marx Brothers or Money Python, and it, it affected not just mental health but physical health as well, which was something that was mind blowing at the time, and now it's kind of take for, for granted. So, any other? How will? Let me understand. You, you you told us how we can help you. We can find that help us find teams, help us find sponsors, and. and find new venues for your state. Correct. What, should, what would be your ideal venue? Is there any place you'd like to speak that you think would be the, big, be the biggest audience, the biggest leverage? Yeah, a corporate convention probably, I think would be uh, the best. Um, I would prefer somewhere in maybe Maui, uh, <laughs> Bahamas, I would like a beach, beach. I think it's pretty great. Very hard to seven thousand, possibly ten thousand people. <laughs> I, I am thinking, well, ten thousand people on the beach would make it less. Well, no, they'd be in the conference, but you'd be on the beach. It's hard to be very depressed on the beach, especially when you got one of the drinks with the umbrellas in it. Uh, we coconuts. We actually have a couple conferences we're going to be speaking at uh, over the summer. So they're not on the beach, though. So, so is anything you can announce and say and maybe brag on yourself a little bit? this conference you're going to speak at? Um, we just got confirmation that there's a company here locally that has uh, several hundred um, franchises and they've uh, agreed to go down and speak to the organization and Cheryl and I are actually going to do breakout sessions as a couple. So we, we train and teach on a couple relationship things. So we got a very unique story. It's interesting, actually Monday, we went in, a uh, gentleman heard our story last Thursday and said, hey, I would like to interview on the radio. So I went in and kind of told my story. I said, yeah, really? and, and Cheryl was with me, and, and she told her amazing story. And, and so there were two, he's going to actually use them for two different weeks on a radio show here locally. So that's kind of exciting. But we work really well together <coughs> as, as a couple and for training. So I'm looking for opportunities to be able to share. I think really it's one of the most powerful messages there is because we're going to use them all the time. And so we become a bit of an expert on the power of words and being able to use those in companies, organizations, and schools. So that's why we're here, is to share and find opportunities and doors that can open that we can never walk through. So we're looking for some big doors to open for us.
Sounds good. So we've got third people in this room who can, can do that. That is great. That's sort of exciting because there are a lot of feel-good groups out there, and most of them, it seems like the only person that really feels good is the person who's getting, you know, running it and getting paid to do that. Yeah. You, you've always been very genuine. When I first met Rocky, I was trying to find out what the hell he was doing. What was he doing with through these t-shirts? And all he was doing was helping other people. Like, no, no, be selfish for a minute. And it took me like, what, months to, to, to get him to do that. So I'm honored to, we're honored to have you here. Yeah. Between you and Meg, I feel a lot better about the world this morning, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I had this odd craving for Mel. Uh, so, uh, you do <laughs> No, those are all mine. <laughs> Not by them, they're mine. Uh, it, it's just been, uh, it's how heartwarming that these stories I don't think five years ago, ten years ago, we would have had these kinds of stories. Right? right. That the world is getting better, damn it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Rocky. Thank you. Thank you.